By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing a game of budget magic, so that means a lot of reprints and it is super budget friendly. We're not even playing with duels in this matchup. I'm bringing my blue-white mid-range deck to the table and I'm taking on Yoop and he has an Urnum Geddon deck. So that's white and that's green. And I'm really looking forward to show you these decks because they're a lot of fun to play. And like I said, they are budget friendly. So if you like these brews, they're easy to get. Now, before I jump into the deck text, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, maybe check out the deck text later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games, Click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And as for here, I'm going to continue with the deck decks, starting with the deck of my opponent, Urnum Geddon. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. And this is really a classic deck, right? Urnum Geddon. It's uh, been one of the stronger decks back in the day. It's green and it's white. And it's really built around Armageddon in combination with mana ramping and, and fast creatures like Savannah Lions. And of course, the Urnum Jinn. So what you want to do here is ideally have a turn one Lanawar Elves, perhaps even a turn two Felwer Stone, kind of ramp up, get an Urnum Jinn or a Sarah Angel out as quickly as you can, and then drop your arm again and destroy all lands, and you've got a big creature in play. Now, the interesting thing here is that Yoop is also playing with three Jam Day Tomes, and you may think, Jam Day Tome and Armageddon, does that really work? So I asked him about this as well, and he said, well, if we're playing only with reprints and we're kind of building a budget deck, I think drawing cards is so important. And actually the Gem Day Tome is one of the only ways for me to then draw cards. So I just want to play with the Tome just in case that I cannot find that arm again or I cannot do that strategy. Also, he said, I'm of course the person who times when I play my Armageddon. For example, if I still have a lot of lands in hand, I can play my Armageddon, perhaps already have a Jam Day Tome on the, on the field, and then I can, you know, start playing out lands, and I go to that four lands quite quickly, and I get card advantage over my opponent as well, and perhaps I also have on top of that my Ramp Creatures, Lanawar Elves, and my Artifacts, Felwer Stones. So, you know, he was kind of really arguing that, you know, because I'm the person that times the Jam Day Tome and that times the Armageddon, I know when it's the right moment to play or how to combine them together. So I'm really curious to see in this matchup how that works. Now, obviously, uh, when we're talking about budget, by the way, the, the most expensive card in this deck is the Sylvan Library. They're quite expensive. This is a fourth edition uh, copy. So, you know, if you would want to, you know, pimp this deck, if you want to make it better, the first thing you would do, I guess, is add the Dual Lands, add some more Sylvan Libraries, perhaps take out the JM Day Tome still because you can draw cards with your... Sylvan anyway, but you know what? Let's first see how the Gem Day Tomes work out in this deck before I judge. But for me, it kind of feels counterproductive. The rest of the deck seems to make a lot of sense. I also understand, of course, the argument of, of Yoop. You know, you want to draw cards. And when you're playing with reprints, Gem Day Tome is by far the strongest card draw card that you have access to. Okay, so this is the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here we see my deck, so it's blue and it's white and it's a mid-range deck. And I think when you're looking at reprints, this is one of the most budget-friendly decks you can build that is like also really, really good, you know? I'm not even playing dual lands in here, but I still think I can cast all my stuff because I'm only playing two colors, uh, you know, 10 islands, 10 planes, two city, uh, city of Brasses. Now you could, of course, play with four City of Brasses as well. I think they still count as budget, but I just kept to, to two here. I'm also playing with the Felber Stones. Perhaps a little bit light on mana. I could go to 24 mana, but that's why I've chosen to go with four Felwer Stones in the deck that at least I have those mana sources as well. Now, as you notice, I'm of course playing with, you know, your usual suspect, Swords of Plowshares, Disenchant, Savannah Lion, Sarah Angel, Counterspell. That's really at the heart of the deck. And those are just really good cards. And the nice thing about these cards is they're all available as reprints, so they're pretty budget friendly. So it's quite easy to obtain. Now, what I'm not playing with here is a Surrender Befreet. I've chosen not to. Instead, I'm playing with ghost ships and because I'm playing with ghost ships because they have only two power I thought you know what maybe I can add a little bit you know spice in the deck some fun and I can add some meek stones because the opponent probably doesn't see it coming in this type of deck so I would add a meek stone for the bigger creatures and when I was thinking about the tapping theme I thought you know let me just put one stasis in I'm really a big fan of one-offs because they keep the game interesting for yourself when you're playing with the deck and also for your opponent it's really hard to kind of 
uh, predict what's going to happen. So if you all of a sudden have a stasis and that has a pretty big impact on game one, your opponent is going to sideboard completely different. It's going to, you know, the, the whole next game will probably evolve, or re, uh, sorry, evolve, revolve around that idea that he thinks, oh, maybe he's going to play out a stasis. So I really like a stasis as a one-off. I also think that in this deck, stasis can be quite good, of course, with the Sarah Angel right next to it. And I think the Mixstone can be quite good because my Ma Moti Jin is the only beef boy that would get tapped by the meek stone now i'm also playing with one twiddle of course that's kind of that synergy uh with the stasis there and again i kind of like twiddle as this surprise it can sometimes win you the game you know if you tap down that maze of if to just get through with your your big beater that can make a, a huge difference it can win you the game so i kind of like it as a one-off the same thing goes here for unsummoned the rest of the deck i mean it kind of makes sense i'm also playing with two jam day tomes by the way i believe uh Yoop is playing with three actually but i'm playing with two um, they're quite good in this control build. You know, this is really more a control build. You might look at the Savannah lines and think you're you're playing aggressive, but basically what you want to do with these type of builds is maybe play the line early, you know, turn one and kind of poke with it and keep counter magic open or play the line later in the game and protect it with counter magic. You know, it's really not... Um, the goal is not to like quickly finish your opponent off. There are just too many control cards in this deck and the, the deck gets too good mid game, late game to be an aggressive quick deck. Now, a few things that I could consider adding in here, of course, is a soul ring. There's no soul ring in here. I just don't have an extra copy laying around. Uh, so I could add that. Another th a card I could add here, place that actually, of course, are the Mistress Factories. My mana base would get a little bit more wonky because remember, we're playing budget, so I'm not playing with Tundra. I'm only playing with two cities. So it's kind of tough because I do have, you know, the double white and the Sarah Angel and the double blue with the counter spells and the ghost ship. So maybe, maybe. It's, it's, it's things worth to think about. There's a lot of space here still to create and brew and probably make a more optimal build, but I'm kind of liking the deck the way it is. And this is super budget friendly. So if you like this brew, you know, you can get it. It's uh, it's very affordable. Anyway, this is my deck. We looked at the deck of my opponent. That means we're ready. Let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. I'm sitting on the right with my blue and white mid-range deck. And Yoop is sitting on the left on the play here with this Urnum Ganon deck, green and white. Starting off with a Lanora Elves. That's a great start. And look at me. It uh, looks like I'm taking a Mulligan. Or I must have been so scared of the Lana. We're so impressed that I'm... Just giving him the game win here, but I don't think so. Probably just taking a mole here. Going to go down to six cards. I am on the draw, so at least I can then draw back up to seven. That's something. Let's first see if I'm going to keep this seven. And then, of course, I have to put one card on the bottom. So looking at my hand, but this is already looking like a great start for uh, you. Potentially next turn, he can play out some more ramp. He's playing with Felwer Stones as well, and then... Turn three, probably he will uh, play a bigger creature. Like a Sarah Angel or an Urnum. And then he could cast an Armageddon. That would be kind of his dream scenario. But of course, I've got a lot of weapons against it as well. Playing a Plains here. Are we going to see a Savannah Alliance? No, just a pass. Let's see what my opponent can do. Untapping here, of course. What are we going to see? Are we going to see some more pressure on the board? Are we going to see a Felwer Stone? There's a Mishra's Factory. There's the Felwer Stone. So this Felwer Stone gives him access to white. Attacking for one here, it seems. And uh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not losing a card. Taking the wrong dice there. So going to drop to 19. Six cards in hand now. Tapping two. Perhaps also to cast a Felwer Stone. Exactly. So we're both playing with Felwers. Five in hand now. Passing to turn back to my opponent. And now he's got, I mean, four mana. If he can find another Plains, he could potentially play out a Sarah Angel. That would be devastating. Okay, Jam Day Tome. Also bad, but not as bad. Again, that attack here with the Lana we're going to drop to 18. That Lana we're Elf is aggressive, by the way. Usually they tap for mana, they're quite sweet, but this one is uh, on a warpath. Tapping two here, what are we going to see? Okay, there's a Divine Offering playing one main. That means four life for me. Yeah, this is really a great, uh, great moment. The Divine Offering is exactly the card I needed here. It's going to gain me four life and the Gem Day Tome is gone. So I'm uh, now on 22. And of course, Yoop can also now animate the factory if he wants to. But I am keeping Counter Magic open, by the way, with two blue. So I wonder if he hasn't earned him, if he's going to play it. 
Look at that, he's gonna animate instead and attack. Recognizing the two open blue, probably. Deciding not to play a Sarah or an Urnum. Ooh, there's another factory. So could have played that factory before. Could have dealt an extra point of damage, but maybe he has his reasons. Passing to turn you on tapping. Now I've got five. I mean, I'm playing four Sarah Angels in my deck. Are we gonna see one here? Tapping four. Okay, there's a ghost ship. Two four flyer originally from the dark. Three blue to regenerate. I think it's one of the better creatures in the dark expansion. A very useful card. I enjoy playing uh, with it in my other decks. Blue decks as well. Another gem they tome here. And I mean, this, this ghost ship is doing a great uh, job here at at least stopping another attack here by Yoop. And I'm on 19, you know, it's going pretty good. But of course, I'm not all too happy to see this gem they tome. Hopefully, I can cast a bigger creature now. Tapping four. Okay, having a gem they tome of my own. So perhaps we're just going to draw cards for the next couple of turns. So I've got a decision to make her to attack or not. Deciding not to kind of makes sense. If I would attack, I'm opening myself up for, you know, a lot of damage because he also has two factories. Let's see what he's going to do. Could, of course, just draw a card with the Tome. Yep, that's exactly what he does. Going up a card. Tapping the Lana Where Else for mana, I assume. Yep, for mana. There's a Lana, uh, sorry, a Soul Ring. Not, not another Lana Where Else, just a Soul Ring. Tapping the Fell were Okay, there's the Savannah Lions. And there's the past turn. So nothing really worth countering there, which is always a bit frustrating if you keep counter mana open. Now I'm drawing a card as well. Going to go to three cards in hand, passing to turn. So we're kind of in a standstill at the moment, just drawing extra cards with the Tome. But I am a little bit worried, I have to admit, you know, I'm a little bit scared for the Armageddon. Although I've got counter magic open, three cards in hand, haven't played a single counter spell yet. There's a tap of four. Are we going to see an Urnum? Oh, there's a Sarah Angel. So I guess it's five. The planes must be under that Felwer Stone. There's a counter spell though. Countering the Sarah Angel. Also signaling here to my opponent that I don't have a control magic. Well, probably don't have one. Three cards in hand after the draw again. Playing his City of Brass. Tapping six. Okay, what are we going to see? Brain Geyser? No, I'm not playing Brain Geyser. Oh, look at that. Mahamoti Jin. Papa Moti. This is really good. This is a card that, you know, Yoop has to answer here. Of course, he has got the book to kind of dig further. He is playing with Swords to Plowshares as well. So just the Swords would get him out of trouble again. Now, I do have two blue open there still with the City of Brass and the Island. So maybe that last card in my hand is a counterspell. But if it was Yoop and I would find the swords, I would definitely take the risk here. We'll just have to wait and see what he's going to do. But the fact that he's taking so much time is a good sign for me. There's a Pendlehaven. The problem here for Yoop is that also I'm pretty high on life total. So, I mean, yes, he could attack with everything and then he would probably lose a factory and he could deal some damage, but is that really what you want to do? Okay, here's the attack. So for me, this kind of signals that he has a balance in hand. So now I've got a choice to make. Am I going to block one of the creatures, kill it, and saying, okay, you still got one left in case of a balance, or am I just going to take the damage? It looks like I'm just going to take the damage here. So I'm going to drop to 15. And he's going to draw another card with the Jam Day Tome. And there are more creatures on the board even. So the earn him there as well. So he's kind of giving up on his plan to let me, uh, you know, kill the creatures here and then play the balance. If he has a balance on hand, of course. Perhaps he was bluffing and just wanted to deal some damage, which he succeeded in. I'm now on 15. And this is kind of rough for me as well, because if I attack with the Mahamoti, you know, he can attack me with, uh, for example, the earn him next turn. So this is really kind of tough. Two cards in hand. 
need to make a decision here. Could just pass and step draw a card, kind of see where it goes from there. I could wait until I, for example, draw into a swords. Look at that, I am attacking with the Modi, so I needed some time to think about it. I am attacking now, putting him on 13, passing the turn. So I'm kind of opening up now to an attack. I'm really expecting the Urnum to go, and I wonder if he's also going to animate the factories and attack with everything. Another line of play could be to just attack with one factory, and I put the counter there, by the way, on the Goshi, because it gets forced walk from the Urnum. And the Yupier drawing another card. I really wonder what he's going to do. I kind of have this feeling that he's going to go all in, you know, because he can deal a lot of damage. Look at that animating both factories here. Exactly. He's going to go all in. Doing an alpha strike. I'm on 15. This is not a bad strategy. I mean, he cannot just wait until I kill him with the Moti. And now I have a decision to make. Probably going to block a factory here. Looks like I've got some cards in hand, some action actions to make, perhaps an unsummon. I play a one-off in the deck. Gonna draw a card here with the tome. Let's see what I find. The swords will be really nice here. Tapping the Falwar, probably for white. Okay, there's the swords to plowshares. Playing it on the Urnum, of course. So Yupa's is gonna go back up to 17. And then I'm probably going to block a factory here. So blocking the factory, meaning that I'll take four, six points of damage. Dropping to nine. But this could have gone a lot worse. Can you imagine if I hadn't had uh, the swords for the Urnum? Maybe I would have taken an extra four. I would have been on five, you know. That's really a, a whole different story. Now I'm on nine, still fe feeling pretty secure here. I could... Attack my opponent and put him on 12. Let's see what I'm going to do. Two cards in hand. Again, I have this decision to make. Am I going to be aggressive? Another line of play could be the only attack with the ghost ship. But I think it's really better to just, you know, attack here with the Modi. Because with the ghost ship, I can kill the Savannah Lions. I can kill the factory if he animates an attack. So the only creature I cannot kill is the Lanawar if he pumps it with the Pendlehaven. So in this scenario, of course, I don't know what I have in hand. Exactly. I would just attack here with the Modi. Putting you here on 12. I'm on 9. Three cards in hand. Passing the turn. We both still have the act active gem day tomes. Which is funny. Usually these tomes don't last for that long of course i've already used one of my uh, removal spells on the first tome but remember you also has disenchant and i believe also divine offerings anyway playing another planes now just to clarify of course we haven't seen each other's deck lists so i am i remember playing this game and i was quite surprised to see that second tome coming out from the side of my opponent he's gonna draw another card here If he can find a sword, he's completely back into this match. All he needs is one sword to plowshares, get rid of the Papa Modi, and I mean, it's game on again. The way it looks like now he's on a three-turn clock, of course, being on 12. Maybe even a two-turn clock, because next turn I can put him on seven. And then the turn after that, I can attack with the ghost ship and the Modi and kill him. But of course, that's still far away, though. Look at that, attacking with everything again. Gonna draw another card again. I'm on four now. Looks like I'm gonna block probably again the factory. It is surprising to me that he keeps also, well, it's not surprising to me actually. It, it makes sense because he wants to put optimal pressure on. Gonna deal three points, I'm gonna drop to six. Another tome. Wow. He's finding all his GMD tomes here in, in game number one. He's playing three in total. Found all three. Problem for him is he'd rather have another Urnum to hit the board because I'm on six. Another Urnum would have made a huge difference, by the way. And now it's going to be difficult for him. I can attack here with the Modi, put him on seven. And next turn, then I can potentially finish the job. Again, drawing another card. Not finding 
any Sarah Angels, by the way, which is funny because I am playing with uh, I am playing with the playset of Sarah Angels. Attacking with the Modi. Dropping to seven. Okay, this is working. All I need is one more turn. One more turn. But Yup has two books. It's got a lot of outs. The Swords would help him live another turn. A Sarah Angel would help him live another turn. Those are kind of the two big cards I think he needs. I mean, he's on seven. We cannot see how many cards he has in hand, but I'm sure there are a lot because he's drawing a lot of cards this turn. I mean, this game. Attacking with both. I mean, yeah, blocking one again. Blocking here the lion, taking a damage. He's not pumping it up, it seems. Now he can cast a balance if he has it in hand, and then I would lose one of my flyers. It wouldn't be ideal for him, though, but it is a way to survive. He's on seven. Maybe he doesn't have the balance, of course. I mean, I keep thinking he has it, but... Okay, he does have a balance. Okay, that's something. Ooh, counterspell. Countering away the balance. Winning here in game number one because of this. Because he's completely tapped out, showing me his hand, lands, and another Urnum. Yeah, unfortunately for him, I am winning this game one, but it was... Ooh, there's the swords, though. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That, is, that was my luck in this game one. I mean, it's as simple as that. I drew a Mahamoti. He couldn't find the swords to plowshares, even though he's playing with four. Sometimes that happens. So just lucky for me, it was a very cool first game, though. We are going to shuffle up, and we're going to have a look at our sideboards. And I'm probably gonna, gonna board in a pretty cool blue enchantment. Hopefully I can play that in game two. Anyway, we're gonna shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Look at Yoop go again, Alana or else turn one. Looks like I've taken a mulligan again, by the way. Starting here with a Savannah Alliance. So five in hand right after the draw. So there's some pressure from my side. That's something. Let's see what uh, Yoop can do here on turn two. Can he find another Felwer Stone, for example? There's a strip mine. Ooh, taking care of my mana base here and also playing out a Soul Ring. That is really good. There's another Plains. No Islands for me. Not yet, at least. Attacking here with the Lions. Offering a trade here. He is taking it. Interesting. That surprises me a little bit. I didn't expect him to take it, to be honest. Tapping four. Are we going to see? Ooh, there's an Urnum. I need his swords now. Interesting, right? Because in game two, uh, or in game one, Yoop needed the swords. And now here in game two, I need the swords. Looks like I don't have it, though, because I'm playing out of Felwer Stone, passing the turn. That means I'm probably going to drop to 16 here. Going to tap three... Oh, look at that. Gonna regrowth the strip mine. Yuck. That is disgusting. Let's see what he's gonna strip, though. Is it gonna be the island or the plains? I mean, he could consider... Okay, he's gonna take care of the plains because of the swords. Makes sense. But he could have considered taking the island so then I cannot counter. Well, I need double blue for that anyway. But another reason for me, for him to want me to keep the white is that perhaps he wants to play his own Felwer Stone. Look at that, Prodigal Sorcerer. So this is a card that uh, came in from the sideboard, playing two in the side. So they're quite good against the Lanora Elves and against the Savannah Alliance of my opponent here. Attacking with the 4-5. I don't think I need to chump yet. I mean, it's a possibility, but exactly. It's better now to just take the damage. There's a Felwer Stone. But I mean, what's tough here for Yup is that he also doesn't have any white mana. So it's difficult for him. Playing another Felwer Stone. And there's the pass. So my Tim is going to get Forest Walk again. That's why it has a counter on it. I'm going to take more damage. Going to drop to 8. Going to ping my opponent for 1 here. He's going to drop to 19. It's looking really bad for me. What I need is, is a White Man and a Swords. That's what I need. Tapping 4. Okay, there's a Ghost Ship. For a moment there, I thought it was a Control Magic. Because that's, of course, another great... Card for me to save me out of this dire situation. So playing another ghost ship. Now I really wonder if I'm going to go to four. Or if I'm going to jump here with the Tim. And look at that. My ghost ship is getting the forest walk now. 
There's the attack. So what am I going to do? Taking more damage even. Drop to four. This is super risky. Of course, going to ping my opponent on the end step. He's going to drop to 18, but I'm on four. It's looking so bad here in game number two. It looks like we're going to go to a game uh, number three here. Oh, wow. This changes things around. Look at that. Stealing the Urnum. Attacking with the ship, passing the turn. And remember, my opponent doesn't have any white mana. So even if he has a disenchant in hand, cannot cast it yet. He first needs to find some white mana. If he can then disenchant the control magic, I'm in trouble again. But if I can untap, keep two blue open, exactly, potentially, hopefully now protect the control magic with counterspell, that would be fantastic. I think I should just exactly, this is a, an attack for six. Look at the life total of my opponent. It's dwindling. He's on nine. I can ping him and step. He's on eight. And then next turn, he's almost dead, actually. That is a big deal. Playing another Felwer Stone, not such a big deal. But wow, look at this. The game has completely shifted after the control magic on the Urnum. There's a Felwer by my opponent here. What can he do? I think he needs white. He needs white for swords, white for disenchant. As long as he cannot find that, I'm in the clear. I can attack him now for six, put him on two. Am I going to actually win this? He has one last turn where he has to find an answer. Remember, end step, I can ping him for one, and then next turn, I can kill him with the Tim. There's a sword, but he doesn't have a white source. It's over here winning game number two. Look at this hand full of white cards. So incredibly unfortunate for you, Pierre. And uh, I mean, I've got good news. I've got good news, don't go away yet because we are playing a game number three. So even though it's already decided, we are playing a game three because I think Yub's deck deserves a moment in the spotlight. Again, very unlucky here in game number two, not finding any white sources. And again, I was quite lucky, but that's part of magic, of course, finding that control magic in the nick of time because I was on four, I was on four. All he needed was one more turn, uno mas, and he would have won it anyway. It's 2-0 for me, but we are going to play that game number three. So let's go to game three. Game number three, here we go. So I've already won the match, but why not play game three, right? I mean, it's fun. And I actually want to see Yoop's deck shine. So uh, he's starting out with the Soaring. He's had really good starts in every single game thus far. I mean, he can't complain about that. You know, Lanora Elves in game one and two, and now a Soaring. I'm starting off with a uh, Savannah Lines, by the way, which is a decent start for me also because it's a City of Brass, meaning next turn I could play out an Island have Counter Magic up. There's the Jam Day Tome being played out here by Yoop. So that's going to give him some card advantage here. Really nice to have a Jam Day Tome and a Soul Ring. You got your little card draw engine. There's my second blue. Going to tap here. Am I going to play a Disenchant? Going to play a Divine Offering here. On the book. Okay, that's really good. I did that in game one as well. It proved to be pretty effective. So again, netting some life. And of course, I can attack with the lion as well. Going to put Joop here on the 18 and passing the turn. Four cards in hand only. I believe I started with the mulligan again. There's a Felwer Stone. And now that Felwer Stone is really good for you because I have a City of Brass. So it can make any color of mana now. That is kind of what you want to have if you play Felwer Stone. There's another book, though. Remember, he's playing three in his deck. I mean, that's absurd, you know? Three in an Urnum Ganon deck. That's really unexpected. But it seems to work for him, so... You know, if it, go, if it works, it works. Anyway, attacking with the line, putting him on 16, passing the turn, keeping blue mana open to counter. I wonder if I can finally find a Sarah Angel here. We haven't seen, I think, any Sarah Angels, right? Well, one that I countered away... But uh, not a lot, considering we're both playing with the full playset. And Yoop here, in the meanwhile, drawing some more cards. I wonder if he's going to attack with the factory. Let's see what he can do. Tapping two. Oh, there's a balance. There's a balance. How many cards does he have in hand? That'd be pretty yucky. I mean, I'm going to lose my lion, and he's going to lose a land. And then the question is, how many cards does he have? It's hard to see three, perhaps. So I guess I'm going to discard a land, or am I going to counter this away? I'm, okay, I'm going to counter it. 
Kind of makes sense because I think I would have lost a creature and a land. Or sorry, a creature and a card from hand. And he would have lost one land. So it's, uh, it seems better to counter it away. Attacking here with the line. Going to put him on 14. Kind of trying to put his life total under pressure. Because he's going to have more card advantage, of course, with that gem de tome. I need to find like another disenchant. I really have to get rid of that tome. Or kill him really fast. That's the other option. He's on 14. He has tons of mana. One card in hand, it seems. Going to tap three. Oh, okay. He's going to play out a regrowth. Ay, ay, ay. And now it's even more painful for me. Look at that balance. No counter magic this time. Oh, this is really bad. Only one card in hand. I'm going to lose three cards to this balance. That is devastating. So I'm just going to keep the one. Losing three Sarah Angels. I had three Sarahs in hand. So you don't see any Angels in game one and two. And then in game three, you have three Sarahs in your hand. That's insane. And I just have to discard them here because they're not useful at the moment. But you know there's going to be... Uh, exactly now I'm already on four mana right there's going to be a moment in the game when I so wish I would have still had those Sarahs you know that that moment is coming closer and closer it's looking really really bad for me also because of that book of you here I mean this balance was perfect I, I countered the first one away but the second one after the regrowth I had no answers there's a lot of elves Oh, this is just really bad for me. He's going to just play some creatures, draw some cards. He can also attack if he wants with the factory. Still has enough mana to draw. Chooses not to. Probably a little bit afraid maybe of some uh, some removal. But I think he could have he could have done it. Because if I, if I would have had a disenchant, I would have played it on the Tome already. Anyway, minor details. He's stealing this game now. There's an Urnum. Well, actually not stealing it because he's been winning it the whole, <laughs> whole time here in game three. So playing the Urnum, it's looking really bad for me. Two cards in hand. I need a miracle. Yeah. I just need a really good moment here. Perhaps a balance of my own would be quite good. Balance would take care of both of the creatures. And it would force him to also discard a card in hand. Tapping two. Do I have... Oh, I got a balance. Okay. That's pretty decent. I've got one in hand, meaning he's going to lose his, both of his creatures and he's going to lose a card in hand. And I don't think he's going to lose a land, right? He's got four lands. I've got five, so i got to lose a land. So putting away one of the islands that I tapped to cast the balance. And he's also going to lose a lot of elves. I mean, the problem here is, yes, it's good. But the elephant in the room, which is the Gem de Tome, is still here. It's still hurting me. Playing a Savannah line there in my second main. But of course, he still has that Factory Worker also to block the line with. I mean, it's not looking, it's not looking good. The book is the problem. I need to take care of the book. Untapping here. I really need... A few really good draw steps. I'm still on, 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 actually I'm on 21, so I'm higher than my starting life total. So I've got some time to spare. But I mean, I cannot give my opponent too much time with that active gem data on one card in hand. If I can just find one of my three disenchants that are still in the deck, I can take care of the tome. And then, yeah, I'll probably take some damage from attackers, but I'm still on 21. That's fine. The problem here really is that balance that set me back. You know, I had to discard my three Sarah Angels and right now I only have one card in hand. I'm just in a really bad position still, even after that balance. There's the attack. He's going to pump it up. Two damage for me. Drop here to 19. An island. I'm going to attack. That's interesting. Not quite sure why I'm doing this. Perhaps making a mistake. Okay, I've got a Swords in hand. Okay, I'm Swordsing the Factory before he can declare a block. So he can tap it, of course, then for life. So he's going to gain three, going to lose two. So he's going to go one up. I 
Oh, he's going to use it to draw a card. Okay, fair enough. Then he's only going to go two, uh, two uh, uh, up, two down. So he's going to stay on 14. But yeah, no cards anymore in hand. I mean, this is problematic. Five cards there for you. I mean, that GM Day Tome is really winning this game for him here. He's going to untap. Going to go up to six, I believe. That is just insane. I mean, if he can just slam and earn him or a Sarah on the table... Just a Lando for now. Tap a white. There's a Savannah Alliance. I mean, he's probably going to attack with the uh, Lanawa, right? Yeah, exactly. He can pump it with the Pendlehaven anyway. Yeah, he's going to deal two points of damage. Drop to 17. Taking my turn. I wonder if I'm going to offer to trade your line for lion. The thing as well is, is I don't really have any cards in my deck that are like are really going to save me here. Like I don't have a brain geyser. Obviously, I don't have any blue power because it's a budget deck. I think the best thing I can hope for is a disenchant to get rid of the book and then just try to rebuild. I'm still on 17. That's something. Tapping four, okay, there's an Urnum. So now the hurting is, is gonna start. The hurting is gonna start. Yeah, he's gonna attack. Of course, he's gonna offer to trade. He wants to keep four mana open, by the way, to a draw a card with the Tome. That's why he's not attacking with the Lanawer. So I'm dropping to 15. Tapping, okay, what do I got? Control Magic? Oh, unfortunately not. Although this is not too bad, but Control Magic is one of those cards that could also kind of shift the favor back to me. Although I'm sure he's got some disenchants in hand, you know, with such a full grip of cards. Six in hand at the moment, going to drop to seven, I believe. Oh, that is just sick. But it is nice to see the, the Urnum deck kind of work here in game number three. He's on 14, I'm on 15. And it feels, I'm just going to say it again, it really feels for me that... that the, the important moment in this game three was the balance. And that kind of set me back. And everything we're doing now is kind of going towards that inevitable moment where I'm going to lose. Here we see a Sarah Angel being played here by Yoop. So finally we see some Sarahs hitting the board. There's a Swords. You know, when it rains, it pours. Swords on the ghost ship. Going to gain two life, but who cares? Going to go uh, back up to 17. And there's the attack. Look at that attack. Barging in there for nine points of damage. Wow. Well, eight points of damage, actually. Dropping here to nine. I'm so dead. I am so dead. Two cards in hand. Already played out my balance. Don't play recall. Maybe I should play recall in this deck as well. There's a life tap. Okay, this is the enchantment I talked about after sideboarding. Life tap is so cool. It's an enchantment. Whenever my opponent taps a forest, I gain a life. It's so cool. I mean, it can get out of hand pretty quick, especially against mono green. But I just, I like the enchantment. You, you don't see it a lot being played. And I think it's such a cool card. It's even, it's actually quite useful in the old school meta at the moment because you see a lot of mono green decks. So life tap can kind of help there. Anyway, let's see what Yoop's going to do. Another Felwer. Kill me now, Yoop. Just do it. Just do it. You've got everything you need. I mean, I'm on nine. I think if he attacks with everything, it's over. I got to block the Urnum. Yeah, he can kill me. Yeah, make it even worse. Kill the Lion. Make it even worse. It's not even necessary, but it's fine. So going to go in here with an Alpha Strike. There we go. There are the troops. Ooh, I've got something. I got a sword still. Can I postpone it? I can. Okay, surviving one more turn. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm on two. I'm so dead, but hey, I'm still alive. Oh, I'm still alive. I mean, control magic? No, it doesn't even save me because I can only take care of one creature. There's no card in my deck right now that can save me because I've already played out the balance. I do have the one life tap. 
Maybe he's going to tap out on green. Who knows? Anyway, attacking with everything. I'm so dead. I am so dead. Anyway, congratulations, you winning game number three. And we had a chance of really seeing the strength of your deck. It's really cool. Here we see the deck of Yook. By the way, one more last look at his Urnum Geddon deck. If you enjoy the brew that he's playing with, it is very budget friendly, so it's very easy for you to build this as well. And here we see my deck. And of course, this was eventually the winning deck of this episode, whatever that means. It is really a fun deck uh, to build. And of course, you can make this a little bit different. A lot of people would go for Surrender Perfeet over Ghost Ship, take out the Meek Stones, etc. You can do that as well and still keep it really budget friendly. That's definitely a route you can take. Uh, anyway, it's a lot of fun to play this deck, so I would definitely recommend it to kind of, uh, if you're starting in old school, this is a great deck to start with. Um, for now, thank you very much for watching. Before you go, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And now that you've done that, or maybe you've already done it, maybe you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, I also have my own Timmy Talks Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks where you can find out how you can become a sponsor of the show. So how you can support Timmy Talks financially. Help me to continue making these videos for you guys. It already starts with just $1 a month and for that dollar you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the Ik het als vinkertje somber kan zien.